From Mount Sinai, the children of Israel began their journey, traveling on the east side of Mount Sinai. Journeying north, they then turned west to enter the Wadi Araba, the wide stretch of land that is part of the great Afro-Syrian rift. Before they reached the southern end of the Dead Sea, they turned again to the west. Here, they settled just before the foothills that led up into the land of Canaan, the Promised Land. Here, they were at Kadesh Barnea. And uh, <clears throat> we're out here at Kadesh Barnea, where Moses struck the rock at the beginning of the 40 year wandering, and then again at the end of the 40 years. The difference was that he did it as directed by God at the beginning of the 40 years, and at the end of 40 years after being aggravated and threatened and uh, rebelled against and all of that, he in anger struck the rock twice. And of course that rock was symbolic of Christ and this was not the symbolism that should have prevailed there. So as a result Moses was not permitted to go into the promised land. Here you see a large stone that was placed in the main sluiceway of the stream as it came down the mountain. And this made the water, shall we say, uh, cascade up into the air, landing uh, several feet distant here and eroding an impressive area out of the rock. And it was from these holes in the rock that they were able to retrieve the water. And of course, as the water came on down out of this area, it flowed down through this area here. Of course, on out into the wide valley here that was home to the Israelites twice in their wanderings. and, of course, for an unknown period of time at the beginning of their wanderings. It was while camped here that they sent out the spies, and as a result of the report of ten of these spies, they decided that they couldn't take the land, and they uh, rebelled against Moses and then when God told them that because of their lack of confidence in him after all he had done for them that uh, they would all die in the wilderness at least the males the adult males and so after this they determined that they would attack the enemy and of course they mounted an assault up into the high country and were defeated because without God's help, uh, they were not a match for these people. And the people had been, shall we say, warned by their priests and by the fact that God had divided the waters of the sea. And so they were told to fight like men. In other words, they were to put everything they had into the battle. And the results was that without God's assistance, the did not come off very well in that arrangement. And here are the pits that the water has eroded away. Okay, we're taking another look at this situation here. And this is uh, very much compatible to a place where a tremendous quantity of water welled or sprang up to the surface out of the underlying strata. And uh, on the top of this stone are places that look very much like where moss has uh, anchored itself. 
was uh, nourishing itself from the limestone minerals. And then when the water ceased, of course, the moss died off. There's this pitting in the stone from the water striking up against this large stone that appears to have been put here deliberately to act as a baffle for this uh, water and to slow the rush downhill to make the water more accessible and less dangerous to the people below. Okay. Tremendous uh, evidences of erosion. I haven't seen anything compared to this except right along a very violent uh, stretch of ocean uh, front, you know, on the islands, stony islands and stony beaches. I think that uh, this is uh, uh, quite an exciting place. Uh, down to the left of this is a very saw, uh, small seismic uh, uh, least shattered area under which we found indications that gold and other objects were buried at a depth of 40 feet. Off in the area where you're looking now were hundreds of graves. We dug into one and there's a lot of individuals in that one grave and I assume that probably they were all of the pits were mass burial pits. The Bible says that 14,000 people died here uh, other than besides Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. This stuff is real sharp, so you should slide on. You know, it's funny. Let's walk around to here and I'll show you where I found that mortar earlier. Okay. Wash up in piles like this and pitch under bigger boulders. Uh -huh. Anyway, ah! what's that? <laughs> well, this is the kind of thing that they'll catch it in. Yeah, yeah, hey. Doesn't appear to be. I scratch around in that area a little bit. Gently, because if there's a oh, uh, piece of pottery or anything, you bust it if you go digging it too big. By artists, this reef. How do you say that? By oysters, leaf. Oysters. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> That's mind boggling. <laughs> now, ordinarily, they're cracked a little or they wouldn't leave them behind. Oh, be wow. It or it'll bust in part, probably. You want to just take wow. the rest of the dirt out of them? Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Look at that. Oh, this is where they squeeze the meat off the olive pit right there. Really? Yeah, that's that's uh, just like the one I found before. Except it was broken. Yeah, it was broken. Or I think it was broken all the way across this way. Did you turn it I over? We had more time. Boy, it just looked like a rock. Look at it. I don't believe it myself.
Here, when Moses struck the rock, water came out for the people. Here, when God told them to go into the land and take it, they asked to send twelve spies into the land first, which God agreed to allow. When they returned after forty days with specimens of produce showing great fertility of the soil, they also spoke with great fear of the inhabitants of the land. Ten of the twelve spies reported that the inhabitants were so great in stature that we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. At that report, the people revolted. In their fear, they forgot the great miracles God had worked on their behalf. God told them that because of their unbelief, all of those 20 years and older would die in the wilderness and not enter the promised land. All except Joshua and Caleb, the two spies who said they believed the Israelites should enter. Here also occurred the rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram who, jealous of Moses and Aaron, attempted to overthrow the leaders whom God had appointed. This plot resulted in a showdown at the court of the tabernacle. The glory of the Lord appeared, and Moses and Aaron were told by God to tell the people to separate from the rebels. Then the earth opened up and swallowed Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, along with all their families and possessions. Then, the 250 men who had allied themselves with them were consumed with fire. The meaning was clear. Rejecting those whom God had appointed would not be tolerated by God. To further give evidence of whom God had chosen to be the leader of the priesthood, each tribe was directed to take a rod and write the name of the tribe on it. These rods were laid in the tabernacle before the Ark of the Covenant. The one that bloomed would be the evidence that God had chosen that tribe for the priesthood. The rod of Aaron bloomed and even yielded almonds. God then condemned the Israelites to return to the wilderness where they would wander for 40 years. At the end of the 40 years of wandering, they again returned to Kadesh as they prepared to finally enter the promised land. But it would not be a totally joyous event, for here Miriam, Moses' sister, died. Just a short distance from Kadesh is Mount Hor, where Aaron died. But most importantly, when they arrived, the stream of water had ceased to flow and the people again murmured. God told Moses to speak to the rock. But exasperated, Moses said, here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Then he struck it twice. God then informed him that because of this, he would not be allowed to lead the people into the promised land. Despite all Moses had done throughout the 40 years, he had disobeyed this one time, and God is no respecter of persons. Moses continued to lead the people to the border of the Promised Land, and there God showed it to him from afar. But then he died, 